everybody, Mrs. Don Frio here. Uh, we're trying a new format to hopefully make it easier for everybody to be able to look at the presentation. So today's artist is Romero Brito, and you can see it's marked 1963 to present, which means he's still alive. Um, if you take 2021 and subtract 1963, that will give you the age of the artist. So he is an artist that lives in the United States in uh, Miami. Uh, but he was born in Brazil, which is a country in South America. And Brazil is a very large country. If you're into geography, you can look that up. It's also one of the few countries where they speak Portuguese and not Espanol the way they do in the other countries in South America. So Romero Brito here is working on a piece of art and uh, it's a chair. He paints on all kinds of different surfaces and he paints everything with love and light. If you go on his Instagram or you go on his Facebook pages, he's very philanthropic, which means he's really involved in giving money and helping children to learn about art and be exposed to art. When he was young, he came from a family of eight kids and they were um, not very wealthy, it was tough and one of his brothers was an encyclopedia salesman that doesn't even exist anymore but that's where we used to get information instead of the internet and he would look through his brother's encyclopedias and see would see all this art from amazing artists like da vinci and michelangelo and picasso all the old artists and he was inspired by that and remember he lived in brazil and he didn't have a lot of money so for him, even the thought of traveling to Europe, to Paris, to France, to study art was sort of out of his grasp. Here is, and I don't even know if there's still Blue's Clues. When my kids were little, there were Blue's Clues. So it was a big honor for Brito to be commissioned, which means somebody called him and said, will you do a sculpture of Blue from Blue's Clues? And so this is what it looks like. So this is the dog, and this is very traditional Brito styling. He takes and he outlines his subject, and then he fills with line and with dot and with color. He's um, an artist that is inspired by everything that's happy. Doesn't matter what you read about him, he's never negative. He is positive about everything, about his art and the world. And he has pretty much turned everything that you can think of into Brito art. Sometimes um, if you go to certain places, you can even find luggage that is done in the Brito style. Mickey Mouse. And this is pretty much an honor because Disney does not sell their licensing to anybody, which means you have to really be someone that they trust in order for them to allow you to use Mickey or Minnie or any of the characters. If you are a math person and you take a look at this, you will see that there are lots of different in those squares signs. And one of the signs that Brito uses in his art is the sign for pi. Now the sign for pi, and I'm going to move something because I made myself some notes, is mathematical. And it is a symbol that's used there. You saw my notes to get dragged across. Um, in trigonometry. So I tried to look up why does Brito use the sign for pi. And he uses a lot of symbolism in his art. You guys are probably much more savvy and can hunt things down better than I can. I really couldn't find why he uses the sign for pie. But you can see it's right above between Mickey's ears there and even just to the right in the yellow square right above Mickey's head. Now Romero Brito has an adult son. And this is an early drawing uh, or painting of Romero Brito with his son. And you can tell he adores him. Look at, he's got a little halo over his head, meaning I love my little angel baby. And he's a, a grown man now. And over Romero Brito's eyes, he's got uh, hearts. So that's telling the viewer that he loves his son. And I like the fact that he put his own curly hair on himself and a big bow tie. They're dressed up again. You can find the sign for Pi there. So this project, uh, when you go and you look at it and you decide to do it, you can do anything that inspires you, whatever it is. I like the fact that he outlines very boldly and usually for him, they're like really expensive Sharpies. Um, and then fills in with all of those colors. Use as much color as you like because it really makes this project pop. 
Darth Vader. I just finished watching The Mandalorian. I really enjoyed it. It was good. And Star Wars is the original everything. So he did a piece of art here where he did Darth Vader. And you can see he's not all black. He's predominantly darker colors. And you can really see all of the detail in the eyes and in the helmet. Again, the sign for Pi. And he signed it up above in the lightest part there so you can see his signature. Um, Brito came, like I told you, from the South American country of Brazil. He lives here in the United States now, and he's very much a person that is um, happy to live in this country, grateful to live in this country. And so he's done a lot of pieces of art that uh, reflect the United States and how proud he is to be an American. You can see here, this is the Statue of Liberty. Really got the sign for Pi across that crown there. And I like how he's used sort of that... Um, interesting looks kind of like a toothpaste color but the Statue of Liberty has what we call a patina because she is poised right at the opening of a harbor and so she's exposed to water and air all the time so she's turned a certain different color of green and for Brito he's used the color of Colgate toothpaste that's what it looks like to me in order to show us the Statue of Liberty and the love of being an American um, every year at the White House, not this year, I'm sure we didn't do it um, because of the pandemic, they have a, an official Easter egg hunt. And up at the very right corner, you can see Romero Brito and his son because he was asked uh, by the president to do a statue that would commensurate the, is that a word? Did I make up a word? I could have made up a word. It means like to celebrate Easter. And you can see the Romero Brito bunny holding the egg there. And all of those people are invited to come to the White House to hunt for Easter eggs. It's a big honor. And so for Brito to be invited and to have a piece of art there, that was really special for him. That meant a lot to him. And so he brought his son. Brito is an artist that um, is asked by many companies uh, when they do advertising to do artwork. And you never have to limit yourself to what you can do artwork on. He's done artwork for motorcycles like Harley Davidson's on the gas tanks. <clears throat> he's done here the little Cooper Mini. And he's done numerous um, food, different products that he's been asked to do the Romero Brito because it's very apparent right away when you look at it, once you study this artist, that that's his work. I was watching, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I was. I was watching the old reruns of Housewives of New York, and one of them, Bethany Frankel, she went all the way to Miami to buy a piece of art for herself, and it was a giant Romero Brito piece of art that hangs in her house still. So here he is at work, and you can see he works on a large scale format. Not everything is small. So he does big pieces of art. He does large installations. If you go on his website or just Google RomeroBrito.com, you will see that there can be as big as buildings. And we've talked about this in the past. Artists that do large installations, they don't do it by themselves. They have junior artists that they work with that a lot of times are internships. And so it's a great honor to work for artists to learn what they're doing and to also help them with what we call installations. Brito is uh, very aware of the connections of all of us on this planet. This was for FIFA, so it was for a World Cup. You can see clearly the soccer ball and the world there. And it's not a perfect world. It doesn't have all the continents exactly. But we know, we know just by the blue and the greens that that's our planet and that he's talking about soccer. Most clearly here, you can see the signs for pi. And you can see he likes to use hearts and stars and lots of geometric shapes. Here is a Carnival cruise ship, and it was uh, commissioned as the Brito ship. So let's say you went on a cruise and you decided to get your trunks or your bathing suit and go swimming. You'd be able to literally go through all of the Romero Brito installations that were on that ship. So he gets lots of honors because... Can you imagine, I don't know, thousands of people go on these ships and they get to swim underneath those canopies and go through that surfer. He's happy there with his arms outstretched that he's having a good time in the water. 
Pepsi. So apparently cats like Pepsi. I didn't know that. I would not give my pets any form of soda. But this little kitty's licking the uh, can of Pepsi. It's sort of telling us that it's cold and it's refreshing. And that is Pepsi, who commissioned Romero Brito to do an ad for them. Uh, Brito is acutely aware of climate and especially coming from Brazil where there's a huge rainforest that produces a lot of oxygen for our planet and there's been a lot of deforestation and you can see the world there has uh, the United, not the United States, North America above it connected to South America and the world does not have a happy face and it is chained and what he's telling us is we are all together chained to this planet it really is a good thing for us to think about everything we do with our trash and our waste and our recycling and to be aware that climate change affects all of us so there's I like this one just cuz she's cute I love the Mona Lisa and that's the real Mona Lisa by da Vinci on the right hand side you know with her smirky little smile and to the left, we have Romero Brito's interpretation. And you can see he's used subdued colors, which means a little bit softer. He doesn't have a lot of bright red and orange because the Mona Lisa is in those pretty warm, we call them amber hues. So he takes the real Mona Lisa and he copies it in his own style. So that is the end of the slideshow. And um, I hope that the loom works for everybody. And I appreciate all of you. I miss you, as I always have. I was talking to Mrs. Gould, who is uh, one of uh, another teacher at Condit that works with art a lot, and we were talking about that. We really miss working with you kids. So anyway, have yourself a good week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.